Howdy YouTube. I mentioned in the giveaway video that I had uh, fallen into some hardwood and haha, ha, thank you very much for your sympathies. But of course, what I meant by that was that I had uh, found a stack, in this case of sugar maple. It was about 250 board feet for which I paid the grand sum of zero dollars. So why, might you ask, would somebody just give away uh, hundreds of dollars worth of wood for free? Well, let me zoom in closer and I can show you. This, this right here, and right here, and right here, <laughs> and up on this board where you can't see it. This is why somebody gives away something like sugar maple. This really super fine sawdust right here, people often refer to it as talc, is the sure-fired sign of an active infestation of some flavor of powder post beetle. I don't know if you can see all the dark spots around this thing, but uh, the beetles have been at work for a while here. There are lots and lots of holes in this wood, uh, which means that there are lots and lots of little tunnels inside of it. Um, but more disturbingly, you know, the bugs are still here, which means that they could, in fact, migrate from this wood into, you know, any other wood that you had sitting around. Now, I saw this dust when I went to pick up the wood, so I knew before I took it that the bugs were here, and that's why it is out here in the, uh, in the great outdoors, uh, sitting next to what is going to be firewood. Uh, it's about the only thing the bugs could get into here. Clearly, there's a limited set of applications where bug-damaged wood is going to be okay. There is a kind of a distressed look style that can be incorporated into some furniture pieces, and so for something like that, just the right design, just the right piece, you know, maybe the uh, beetle holes would actually add to the piece rather than take away from it. The other direction you can go is more where I'm headed, and that's sort of the utility space, right? I need a piece that uh, has the strength and density and weight of something like the sugar maple, but if it has a few bug holes in it, eh, who cares? So ultimately, my goal is to try and salvage at least enough of this maple to make a nice, solid workbench top. If I can salvage the legs too, so much the better, but the top is really what I'm concerned about. And speaking of concerns, I'm obviously extremely concerned about the prospect of bringing a live powder post beetle into my wood shop. So the critters themselves have got to die, absolutely, 100% for sure, if there's any hope of this thing ever being usable as a workbench top in the shop. So based on the looking around I did online, I have a three-step death process planned for the little buggers. Step one is physical removal of as many of the bugs and larvae and everything else as possible. Physical removal of the bugs starts with selection of the wood, and not every piece of wood shows the same level of bug activity as every other piece. So I picked out the 20 boards that had the least signs of active infection going on. I then brought the chop saw outside here to the driveway so I could cut without having to worry about the waste being in the shop. And I cut the eight to 10 foot boards down to six foot six plus or minus, I didn't measure it exactly, we'll do final dimensioning later, to uh, eliminate the checked messy ends and any bugs and larvae that might have been there. With the boards at the correct length, I could take them to the jointer. They got face jointed on one face, edge jointed on a second face to give me two clean sides. And then finally they went to the table saw to get cut to a, a good healthy four inches wide. All of the waste from the jointing and the table saw was immediately cleaned up and taken out to the compost pile. Now all of this obviously just physically removes a lot of the bugs, but it does a second thing. It opens up fresh surface area for step number two, which is treatment with the insecticide. Before spraying the insecticide, I took the hose to my stack of wood and got it wet. Not saturated, of course, because I want it to still absorb the insecticide, but I also want to start the capillary action on the surface of the wood. If you spray the insecticide straight on the dry stuff, most of it just runs off. There are two common insecticides for powder post beetle available commercially. One is called Timbor, the other is called Boric Hair. They're both boron salt based poisons. It's it, boron salts are what actually kill the beetles. The boric hair is significantly more expensive and it's because it includes a glycol that helps it really penetrate the wood much deeper and much faster. If you have an active infestation like I have here, it's probably your best choice. But as it turns out, I'm not really relying on the insecticide to kill these bugs. Heat is the other enemy of the powder post beetle. So the next step is to build a kiln and to cook this stuff. 
that's what's going to get rid of the live bugs, the larvae, anything else that's crawling around in there. So why spray this lumber at all? Well, in a word, insurance. I figure the more ways to kill these bugs, the better. Still, it is kind of a backup plan. So I opted not to spend a lot of money on either Timbor or Boracare, and I made my own insecticide out of good old-fashioned 20 Mule Team Borax. Well, if ever there was a do as I say, not as I do moment, this is it, YouTube. What you were looking at here is one big blue crematorium for powder post beetles, if I have any luck. What this is is two sheets of this rigid foam insulation that has the silvery reflective coating on the inside duct taped together into a box. And if we come down here to the business end of ye old box, there you go. One 5,000 watt, 240 volt space heater. I will uh, probably seal this up a little better now that I have the evidence on camera. I have one probe thermometer in the hot end, one probe thermometer in the cool end, which I have sort of double insulated with the leftover foam. My uh, hot side of the oven hangs out around 140 degrees. The heater just kicked off, so it's coming down a little bit now, but it'll kick back on pretty soon. So it'll maintain around 135 to 140 degrees on the hot end, and the cold end stays anywhere from five to 10 degrees less than that. Now that's light duty. That's a little bit colder than I like it, Another 10 degrees would be awesome to make sure that the bugs are dead -y dead dead uh, but we're going to compensate for it with time. Normally it would only take two, maybe four hours to get the lumber up to temperature and make sure the bugs are dead. I'm going to leave it in there at least eight, maybe 10 or 12. Basically, it's middle of the afternoon now. I'm going to leave it in there until it's time to go to bed tonight and, uh, and then we'll see. Well, the kiln seems to have done its job. I came out here this morning and swept up an awful lot of crispy bugs. And when it was all said and done, I let the kiln run for 10 hours. And when I looked at the data from that iDevices barbecue thermometer, I saw two things. The first is that the average temperature in the kiln was somewhere around 140, 145 degrees, which is absolutely just spot on perfect, uh, not bad for blind dumb luck. And the other is that I had about a 50% duty cycle on the space heater. So it was for the 10 hours actually running only five. If I look at the whole spread of temperatures over what I would consider the operating time, I was as low as 120 once in a while on the cold end of the thing, and as hot as 160 uh, right, right above the space heater on, on this end. So we'll see. It's about a $20, $25 investment in the foam insulation to build this little makeshift kiln, and another 25 kilowatt hours of electric to run the heater for those 10 hours. But if this all works, it's a pretty good investment because I'm saving a couple of hundred board feet of hard maple. What am I gonna do now? Nothing, I'm gonna let this sit. I need to let it rest undisturbed so that I can watch for any telltale signs of the powder post beetle activity, specifically the little piles of dust. So it's spotless right now. I got the air compressor, blew the whole thing off. There is not a speck of dust or chip or anything anywhere hanging on here. So I will know if any of those little buggers still live. So wish me luck. Next week, we're either gonna be gluing up a workbench top or we're gonna be cutting up firewood. Till then, stay safe, YouTube.